going on everyone we're coming back with another top 10 list for you guys today and today we're discussing my top 10 worst films of 2018 this is the dog shit of cinema from 2018 and we're gonna be having a little fun ranting and discussing them but of course guys if you guys are new here make sure to comment down below and let me know what your guys' top 10 worst films of 2018 were plus you guys also want to hit that like and subscribe button so you guys are caught up on movie news, movie reviews on this channel because I do get you guys out early movie reviews. And plus, you guys can check out Sandwich on Films to check out some movies early, check out some movie news, and even movie reviews also over there. But like further ado, let's get down to my top 10 worst films of 2018 or the dog shit of cinema. Number 10 is going to be truth or dare now the truth or dare is just a snapchat filter of bullshitness i this is a film that would have benefited from being an r-rated film and i think would have even benefited more if it was going more onto that campy feeling happy death day succeeded because it knew what it was it was being this campy thing but also being a fun horror slasher film truth or dare could have been the same exact thing because it did end with a ballsy ballsy ending but the film just didn't work out because you don't really care about any of the characters besides the one who's coming out to his dad, which is easily the best part about the whole film. Every other character in here is dishonorable, dislikable, and you just end up wanting to kill them and let them die on their own. But Drew the Dare had a cool concept, but it, but it could have turned out way better if it would have, one, been rated R, and two, hit onto that campy feeling and knew and kind of embraced what it was going to be. Coming at number nine, though, is easily the most cringy film on this list, and that is Life of the Party. I hate this film. I almost walked out of this film multiple times. Melissa McCarthy, I know what I'm going to get from her, and thank God that she ended this year with an Oscar, hopefully Oscar-nominated film from Can You Ever Forgive Me? She was brilliant in that film. But Life of the Party, when she does these films with her husband, Ben Falcone, who are both, they are both, both, both really funny people when they're separated. Uh, this film, I never laughed at. I felt bad for her character in lots of the aspects, especially that scene where she's giving a speech and she's sweating profusely and just i don't feel i'm not laughing and maybe you are maybe you laughed at this remember this is my opinion but i just did not like this film i felt cringed all the time i felt depressed while watching it it reminded me of the real world and that's not why i watch comedy i couldn't relate to this film at all and again maybe to a mother daughter maybe they will like this film more but i just I can't embrace this film anymore. And we go into my number eight, and that is Unfriended Dark Web, which has an intriguing concept. The dark web is a scary thing of its own, but then they just ended up going into a different route that became very unrealistic. And as much as I love the computer screen aspect, I really liked the first Unfriended for that aspect. And Searching, thank God, it was a brilliant film this year that embraced it and knew what it was going to be and actually made a good film out of it. The dark web here, though, is not embraced enough, and when they are going to details about it, it is a very intriguing concept that I wanted them to dive more and deeper into, but they never got around to it and never attacked it more than they should have. I think this film could have easily been 10 times better, and especially with two different endings, which I got one and I hated, and then I read the other one and I thought that was even more stupid. It's a film that doesn't take what it's doing and do it right. It has pretty decent concept and actually a really intriguing concept of tackling the dark web because we've never seen that before or at least i've never seen it in a film before but just doesn't tackle it right and it just ends up becoming a very generic horror film that disappoints me to all levels but now we come to my number seven which you know it's been you know there's been some dog shit this year when this film en ends up on your number seven and that is 50 shades free i knew i was going to hate this film going into it you you know you're going to if you haven't liked the other ones and this film was honestly not bad it was just boring like, there's nothing, I mean, there's bad things about it. The dialogue, some of the things, how she literally gets slapped and hit and gets ends up in the hospital and pretty much goes into a coma, which makes no sense to me. But the sex scenes aren't particularly interesting. You don't believe in the relationship. There's nothing adorable or cute about them. And you end up just going, like I said, Fifty Shades Free ends up just being a very bland and boring film to me that I just have no interest in this. Thank God the series is over. Please don't make any more. The film does not make as much money as the original. And now we can move forward and celebrate that we're never getting a 50 sheets another one hopefully talking about these movies pissing me off i had to take out my flannel and get to my number six which up next is mortal engines or should i say mortal slumbers a film that totally bored me to no ends yes the visual effects are beautiful the world building could have been better but i was still intrigued by the whole concept but overall it just felt boring you don't care about any of the characters it feels like off of star wars and it just in the end of the day you look at this film you go this was horrible. Um, it should have been better. Way better. And I actually gave this film the benefit of the doubt because I, I didn't really listen to any of the reviews. I didn't listen to other people. But I went into this film with a 
a different frame frame of mind that hey peter jackson's producing this he produced district nine which nine's like an all-time favorite film of mine and he embraced this new director so maybe this new director he's embracing will be good i think he should have started on a lower budgeted film i think mortal engines was a little bit too high octane maybe if peter jackson actually directed maybe we could have gotten better performances better characters in a sense i know he wrote the script but i think the direction is at times it's it's there but it's also the script and i think there are a lot of issues just overall with the story and how it's being told i think this would have worked better as a limited series and if this film does come out as a limited series on hbo later down the road if someone reboots it i kind of be interested in it and we get to my number five which is garbage or should i say Gotti, starring john travolta this would have been and should have been a better film that could have revitalized john travolta's well, career, but it doesn't. This film is horrendous. I paid to go see this film. I almost walked out of it. It the story is incoherent. The editing is shoddy. The the makeup is horrendous. And when they're trying to make someone look older, they just put some glasses on him and put maybe some fake facial hair all on him. I don't know what that was, but it's better than anything that Gotti was. Gotti was just an SNL parody film of this man who has a very interesting life and. It's just, it sucked. This film is horrendous, and if you escape this film for some reason, great. Maybe it's your guilty pleasure of yours. Take a shot for every time something happens that's stupid in this film. You'll take a lot of shots, trust me. Next, we're talking about Gringo, which, for a very long time, this was my least favorite film of this year. It kind of has the same effect of me of Life of the Party, where it just feels depressing. It's not funny. I'm not laughing at anything happening in here. And it has an all-star cast. David Oyelowo, Joel Egerton, Charlize Theron, Shalto Copley, Amanda Seyfried, and the list literally, I'm not going, goes on from there. And this film reminds me, every time I think about this film, it just reminded me, I always thought the trailers were fake. It reminded me of a Tropic Thunder, those trailers that happened in the beginning of Tropic Thunder. And I wouldn't have been surprised if Les Grossman had shoved down the production set at the end and said, CUT! That was shit. I think it would have made it better, and if that did happen, I would have given this film an A+, plus just because Tropic Thunder is one of my favorite films of all time, and one of my favorite comedies. Actually, it is my favorite comedy of all time, but it didn't happen, so this film ends up being dog shit and horrendous and completely depressing instead of funny. And number three now, Slender Man. This film pissed me off. I took a big-ass nap from it. Every single time I woke up, I was like, fuck this movie. This movie is not being good. There's nothing particularly interesting about it. Nothing scary. Yeah, the atmosphere is kind of there, and the direction actually wasn't horrendous. The performances were actually decent, but it was really just the script and the writing for it. It never made sense. There's some part in this movie where I always remember being so mad about it because the film was about to end. She's This girl goes, take me, Slender Man, take me. And Slender Man goes, Rawr! and then she goes, Rawr! then she runs away, and then he finally catches her and takes her away, and then we still have a little 10 more minutes. Come on now, end the film. I will say though, the main lead actually wasn't that bad, and the girl from Oculus should have had a bigger screen time in here. Coming in at number two though, is the jump cut of all jump cuts for any type of action film I've ever seen, directed by Peter Berg, starring Lauren Cohen, who was easily the best part of this film, starring Ronda Rousey, who was also a pretty, actually, pretty good part to this, and starring the most unlikable hero of this year, Mark Wahlberg's character in here. I love Mark Wahlberg. I think the guy is so charismatic, but not in this role. This role, this film was called Mile 22, and this film should have been called 22 Down, 22 Miles Deep, 22 Meters deep. This film is literally, like I said, it's the jump cut. Every single action scene in here is jump cut. Jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut. Jump cut. That's all it feels like. It's just a bunch of jump cuts everywhere. Like, I'm just jumping everywhere, and you can't understand what the hell is happening on the screen. Easily the most disappointing film of this year for me. Well, besides my number one, but still, it's the easily the one of the worst films as well, and this film pisses me off more when you go and look at the behind-the-scenes footage, and you can actually see that the action looks good. It's just the way that it was edited and stylized. It does not fit for this film, and I have no idea what the hell happened with this film. It should have been better. It could have been a B-rated action film and would have been awesome, but it's not, and it sucked, and I'm done with this film. Coming down to my number one, which is easily my most disappointing film this year, and my worst film of this year, and that is Pacific Rim 2 Uprising. It star has John Boyega in it, who is one of the most charismatic stars in Hollywood right now, has Stephen D. Knight directing the hell out of this film, and I like Stephen D. Knight. I think the guy's a really good writer, but this film, oh, oh. This film is so bad that at times I sat there contemplating what the hell is going on the screen. It just felt like two kids had two little action figures and they were just playing with them. Yeah, I know these aren't robots, but 
still. I'm gonna add to this film again on how bad it was with just the fact that you just didn't care about anything. There's not enough action in here. The twist with Charlie Day is absolutely one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in a film before. And when it gets down to the robots finally kicking some ass, yeah, the visual effects look cool, but it feels like, like a film that should have been on this channel sci-fi, but it just had a bigger budget. It doesn't have any of that to Del Toro magic like the original one does. And understand this, I knew going in it wasn't going to have this, but I was expecting better from Steven tonight, and I was definitely expecting better from a Pacific Rim sequel. It's, you can say this is a cash grab, but the film didn't make barely enough to say oh we can make us money it made a little bit of a profit but it had potential and they just dropped the ball on this film that you could tell no passion or anything went in this movie between the action sequences between the character motivations and even between the story which was absolutely piss poor but that is my top 10 worst films of 2018 you know guys what are your top 10 worst films of this year what films piss you off what films did i miss hopefully i missed some that were absolutely horrendous curious to your guys thoughts down below and of course guys if you guys are new here hit that like and subscribe and again go check out sandwich on films also down below for those advanced movie screens and i'll catch you guys next time stay classy <laughs>